Hi, my name is Austin Becker, and today I'm going to walk through setting up a feed-driven text ad campaign using Data Feedwatch's text ad tool. So using a feed to create your text campaigns, so your text ad campaigns in Google Ads is, is really powerful because one, it allows you to automatically make an ad per item in your product feed so that you don't have to do it manually, which if you're gonna do it manually, you probably just won't do it because it's so time consuming. The second benefit is that you'll get a really high quality score if you do it this way, if you set up your text ads for your e-commerce store this way, because by using a tool like Data Feed Watch, you can get your keyword and the ad text all to match up perfectly for a really good quality score. So let's jump into doing this now in Data Feed Watch. So I'm in my demo shop, which is trail map apparel and it's just a a t-shirt store that I'm using for examples and what I'm gonna do is create a product feed or sorry a campaign per shirt from this store but I'm gonna use the product feed which will make it go really fast so let's start with um, just setting up the campaign so the steps that I skipped are creating the feed and then linking Data Feed Watch to the Google Ads account. So once you've done that, you'll you'll see what I see now, which is a campaign creation screen. So from here, I'm going to choose the first option. There's a couple differences that are important um, in these different campaign types. I'm just going to start with the product text ad. The the other types I'll cover in different videos. So I've just created a new campaign. I'm going to save and continue. Although if you had another campaign, you could select this. Let's see, yeah, you could select another campaign to copy the settings. I don't yet, so I'll just do create new campaign. And I'm gonna name the campaign, how I usually name my campaigns, which is um, my name, a pipe, and then search, and I'll call it products. And then I'll choose the text add feed that I created before. Uh, and then I'll hit save and continue. All right, so the first screen is the tag assignment and filters page. So you just have to match, it's pretty straightforward. You have to match the um, tag with a field in the feed. So basically you'll just find product name, okay, product name, product URL, make that the product URL, and then so on. So I'll fill these out. And then the custom tags, you can not use these if you'd like, but I'm going to use them. So I'm gonna fill one of these in. Okay, and then I can hit tag preview to see what's going on. So there's my price, there's the category, there's the, the brand or the manufacturer, then the product. All right, so now I'm gonna go down and I won't demonstrate these today, but you can see that if you want to, you can filter only certain categories into your campaign. So actually for this example, let me let me actually do that. So I'll just put in uh, these campaigns or those product categories same thing with the manufacturer but I won't change that right now and then I can also filter out products using the custom tag one filter which I won't do right now and then I'm not gonna actually add any of these these are additional rules that will remove certain things from the campaign that we're creating but I'm not gonna use these right now so I'll just hit save and continue I'll select the default settings as in I won't change these so I'll just let them go all right, so here I'll make keywords. There's there's two ways to make keywords. What we're doing here is we're making keywords from the data in the product feed, and you can do it by truncating keywords, or you can do it by creating keywords by using combinations of the tags that we set up earlier. This is often easier, so I'm actually going to use this as an example first. So I'm gonna pull in the product name, I'll hit the preview button, and I can see that's what a keyword would be that we would add to a product ad for this campaign. That's pretty specific, so women's Yellowstone trail map print t-shirt. It's probably a little too specific, so what I'll actually do is I'll use my category tag, so that just contains the, the map design. To be sure, the map designs are named after uh, national parks in the United States, so that's why category tag is coming up as Yellowstone. So you can see that what I could do here is actually add some custom text in, and then pull in the product category, 
and then preview it. And then I've got a decent keyword. So let's actually change the order of this. So Yellowstone t-shirt. So now I'll just do a couple more variations of this. All right, so now I've got some uh, keywords ready to go. Now this, actually, you can see that I put in women's and men's. This would actually be better to pull the gender from the feed. So I'm actually going to take these out for now. And then what I'll do is I'll just add one more variation, which will be the manufacturer plus the category, and then shirt. So now I have a brand, the type of shirt, and then the product name shirt. So I'll stick with these for now. And I'll hit save and continue. Next step is creating an ad. At this point, you're doing the same thing, just dragging and dropping parts of the feed into the ad copy. And so I'm gonna put in the product name. Let's see, then I'll put the price in, product price. And then I can add in uh, just anything else in headline two, free shipping in the USA. And then let me just drag some other stuff in here for now, because I'm actually gonna make changes to the feed. I just wanna demonstrate what this will look like. Okay, so none of the ads, you can see here that the there's an error. Headline one won't fit. The product name is too long, so I'll click this button to extend it. Now I'll try refreshing this, and I can see that now everything fits. So all that happened here, by me pressing this button, it just extended the product title to spill over into headline two. So I'll put a space there to make that read better, and now I can see that all the products are covered by an ad. All right, so now the ad is created. Like I mentioned, I wanted to put some more data into this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna go back to the feed and I'm gonna add gender to the feed so that I can specify if the shirt is for a man or a woman. I'm going back to the feed section now. This is, you can see I'm in the mapping section. That's, this is the feed that drives the text ad. If you don't know how to make a feed in Data Feed Watch, you can check out the other video that we've made on that. I'll put that in the link below. So right now I'll add the gender. And then I'll just make a simple rule here. So add static value female if the title includes women. And then I'll make a few more rules for the men's and the unisex. Okay, so now I have a gender field created and I'll preview it to make sure that it's gonna work in the, in the feed or in the text ad rather. And I can see that I need to change this already. So I'd rather have it say women's actually. That would be more natural in the ad. So what I'll actually do, I'm gonna change this. Okay, so I'll actually make the gender here in a different field because I want to add a different static value. So I'm going to add uh, women's as the gender if the title includes women. And then I'll do the same for the men and unisex versions. Okay, now I'll preview the rule that I made or the field. All right, and that's what I wanted. So I can see that women's this product that is a women's t-shirt will get that value for the gender. So now I'll check a few more. Okay, and that's what I wanted. So I'm happy with that. So I'll just hit save. And then I did see one other thing that I wanted to change here. I wanted to make sure that the price has a dollar sign in front of it. So I'll check that too. And it does. For some reason, the ad didn't have that. So I'll check that again next. All right, so I'm happy with the feed, and then I'll I'll just click back to the um, that little back button at the top left here, then back to campaigns, and then I'll re-enter the campaign that I was working on, and you'll notice if you mouse over the refresh feed data, you'll see that it was refreshed 10 minutes ago, so that won't include the change that I just made to the gender, so I'll press refresh feed now and that'll pick up the changes that I've made. And this could take a long time, depending on how many products you have in the catalog. But this is a small store, so it's it's done almost instantly. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the ads creation section, and now I'll remake the ad, like I did before, from price. And I can see that I'm not getting the dollar sign in there for some reason, so I'll just add it manually, that's okay. There we go, that's how I want it to look. All right, now I'm gonna add uh, more data here, actually. So. I'm gonna pause this, add it, and then come back. 
Okay, so I came back to the Tag Assignments and Filters section because I realized that I wanted to include the description, the amount off price. So that's like, for example, in this store, $4.99 off of the sale price is the price that will list in the ad. Um, you'll see that in a moment. And then the sale price. So I've just added those into the custom tags. Uh, let me preview it just to show. So there's the description, which we'll use in the ad copy. Now I'll, I'll hit save and continue, and then I'll jump back to the ads creation section. And now here I'll make my ad one more time from, uh, let's see, sale price. Um, and then I'll put this save amount off. You can really do anything you want. There's so much you could do with this tool. So what I, what I did is I, I just put in an example amount off. Oh, let's see, we can't actually see the whole ad. Let me switch it to the mobile preview. If I come in here and clean this up. So now I put save $4.99 today in the ad copy. There's just, you could of course do other things. You could even drop in your inventory quantity. So let's say you only have, uh, let's see, you could put like X number of units remaining and, and replace X with your inventory from the feed. So perhaps this product in the feed would have 45 units available then you could add something like that to the ad copy to add urgency to the ad. So just anything that you can think of, you could probably do with this tool, which is why it's so helpful when making ads quickly from your feed. So let me put that sale price back in. Oh, actually I want the amount off. And then I'll just finish this by putting in the description. And you can see that the description's way too long. So what I'll do is I'll come over to this little options section and then I just have to cut the description if text length is longer than the allowed length. And now description is fitting in to this the description spot in the ad copy. And now I can see another problem came up. So it looks like that dollar sign that I added to the feed just now updated. So let me put that in. Okay, perfect. So men's Pacific Crest Trail Map t-shirt from $28, save $4.99. So I'll click the ad and that's the product it'll link to which is great. And I'm just thinking as I'm doing this, there's all sorts of other things that I probably could add. So like the color and the size, there's just so many things that you could add that I won't today just for the sake of time. But all right, so there's our finished ad. I'm gonna put one more thing in here. Okay, perfect. So I think we'll call that done. Although this is a little awkward the way that the description came in. Uh, normally I would, I would actually change this to look better. So for now though, I'll just keep it as is. You can see I've also added within the second description I've created a sentence using tags from the feed. So find the perfect there, crest, oh yeah, perfect Pacific crest, so t-shirt. Okay, so that doesn't actually, <laughs> there's some more that I could do to this to make it look a little bit better. So I'm just gonna leave that out for now then. Then I'll move to the next step. And now I could make more ad patterns by copying this. I could make or a responsive search ad and have additional add options in the ad group that I'm making. But for now, I'll just keep that one. Then I'm gonna tick this on for now just to demonstrate it, but this doesn't always work. This is in beta at the time I'm recording this, which is December of 2021. What you can do is also add image extensions to each ad group in the campaign that you're making. So you can see right now it's not actually working, but when you're making your ad group or your campaign, I definitely recommend using this feature. All right, so then I'll just hit save and continue. I'm not gonna add any um, other extensions right now. And then at this point, I can set up bidding rules and the budget. So I'll just make it 10 daily budget. And then let's start with maximize clicks at 50 cents a click, some 50 cent max per click, save and continue. And here's some more automated scripts that I'll go into in a different video, but I'm gonna leave uh, them off for now, except for the import search terms from search query. So this means if a search term has a conversion, Data Feed Watch will import that search term as a new keyword. All right, so I'll save and finish. Then I'll just hit finish and then exit. And then now the campaign will create and then export to the Google Ads account. Uh, it can take some time, so let's see. So rather than waiting for this to load, I'm going to click on Start Campaign Update Now. Okay, there we go. So now the campaign creation is in queue, so Data Feed Watch will create the campaign as soon as it's able to and later I'll come back to this and check for click and cost and conversion data. So now I'll actually go over to the Google Ads account to see if it makes it there. While it's updating, I'll just point out that once you connect the Data Feed Watch 
feed-driven tool to your Google Ads account, you'll see it there. If you're not the owner of the Google Ads account, you'll have to ask them to approve it, uh, and it should show up under the Managers section in your um, Access and Security page. So I'm gonna go back to the campaigns, and this might take a while, so I've seen it take up to an hour or two. Oh, here we go, it's already there. So I'll click in here and take a look at what I've got, and so I can see I've got an ad group per product, and then I'll click into the ad group and take a look at the keywords. All right, so I've got the keywords that I made before and then the ads, let's check out the ads. Yep, that's perfect. And then just to be sure, I'll click on the ad link to make sure it goes to the right product and it does. All right, perfect. All right, that's it. So that's how you make your feed-driven text ads using Data Feed Watch's tools. There's obviously a lot more that you could do here. I just made a quick sample campaign that had some mistakes. Normally, I wouldn't let anything get out to Google that has any uh, awkward descriptions, etc. But you can see how to use the tool now. And in the next video, I'll walk through setting up product group campaigns with the uh, Data Feed Watch's uh, feed-driven text ads tool.